to introduce her. Dr. Wright is a expert in crowdfunding. So as we know, all our businesses need an infusion of cash. And so um, she's going to help us uh, work out uh, what that really looks like. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Dr. Wright is an uh, award-winning entertainment industry veteran who delivers in the areas of television, film production, marketing, corporate branding, business development, project management, international bu- and international business. The Right Place TV show is the 14th season is what is in, in its 14th season with over 345 shows on air. Um Currently, the Right Place TV show is seen on DISH and on Demand Network to 60 million homes nationwide. And Dr. Wright is an international speaker and business creator who is the pioneer uh, for exceptional 21st century business opportunities. And so we're, and she also is a crowdfunding specialist, which she's going to talk to us about today. And I guess she... You got a lot of stuff going on, huh? And before we, a lot of stuff. So we want to get into that. And then we're all the caller. He's Skyping in as well. So we're going to bring him in. And his name is Dwayne Ellis. And he is the founder and managing partner of Wealth, the Wealth Syndicate. And he's coming out of Silver Springs, Maryland. And Dwayne is a 15-year financial services veteran and has represented individuals, uh, professionals, and business owners. Okay, Dwayne, are you here? Hello. Hello, Dwayne. Are you on? Are you on the line? Okay. Well, we'll wait until you get patched okay. in. Okay. So, and Dwayne on business owners on their banking and financial planning needs. Dwayne has become a trusted advisor and built a solid foundation of clients through his financial advisory services. Um, let's see what he's he done. He has managed over fifty million dollars in accounts over over his career and his areas of expertise is financial planning investments retirement planning and uh, advisory services and he specializes in applying his expertise and market knowledge to individuals and businesses that consistently exceed the investment goals of their clients so that's Dwayne those are our two people guests today so we're gonna we're gonna start with Dr. Wright so Dr. Wright tell us um some, tell us a little bit about yourself, other than what I read about, and also uh, we're going to talk about crowdfunding and how does it, uh, how do we use that, uh, and get the most out of it, I guess. Well, I I love crowdfunding because it changes so much. It has changed so much over the last five years, and it's because it's you know growing through people. It's backed by people. And so the changes that are being made are very, very helpful in terms of flattening the playing field for Dr. Wright, Dr. Wright, sorry to interrupt you, mm-hmm. but before you move forward, can you tell us the definition of crowdfunding? What is crowdfunding? Oh, very good. That is exactly where I should start. <laughs> so crowdfunding is using a website to share your project as many people as possible to get it funded. So with crowdfunding, we're talking about money. So we're not talking about in-kind uh, donations or anything like that. Now, there are actually seven different kinds of crowdfunding. Mm. So let me take a moment to distinguish this, which will dispel a lot of the confusion that people have about crowdfunding because you hear all these different rules and it seems like this is legal, but that's not legal. But how is he doing this? And, you know, it's just very, very confusing. So the most popular in the common, you know, to the common person, to the average person, is called reward-based crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. That is your Indiegogo, that is your Kickstarter, that is your GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. You give someone some money and they're going to give you something. They're going to give you the book or their T-shirt or their purse or their whatever it is they're making. Right. And it sort of works like a pre-sale. Okay. Uh, in some cases, that's a donation. There's charity crowdfunding where you're giving to a donation. You get the write-off. Americans get the write-off. Canadians don't. Other countries, I don't know. But um, you you are definitely, you know, you're giving to the Red Cross or you're giving to some real nonprofit. So that's charity crowdfunding. Then we have what we call equity crowdfunding. That's where you can sell shares of your company. 
and you could raise up to a million dollars every single year by offering shares of your company. You do have to file a lot of paperwork, but it's not the same as uh, the paperwork it would take you to go public and put your shares on the stock exchange. So you can raise money that way. It's very, very big in real estate. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where all of the really, really big money is. There's what we call subscription-based crowdfunding. And that works a lot like the old-time pledge-a-thons. So remember back in the day when we were little and we watched TV and they would be raising money for something, maybe it'd be Jerry Lewis, and he'd be turning over the numbers, and people would pledge to pay every month a certain amount of money. Right. That's what subscription or royalty-based crowdfunding is like. So you would say, I'm going to give you $25 a month for the next year. And so that works very, very well in entertainment. And YouTube even has a form of it called fan funding. Can that work fan. Can that work in business, uh, Dr. Wright? Can the subscription base work uh, in business? It depends on the business. It depends on the business. If the business model can fit, See, your business model has to fit one of these in order for the crowdfunding to work with you, and you have nailed it on the head. That's exactly the challenge that people are having when they're failing. They're trying to fit the wrong business model for their particular project. Mm. So oh. subscription ba- yeah. So subscription-based crowdfunding uh, can work. It works very well in the entertainment area because there's always new content coming out, and they always have some more stuff for you. So we have subscription-based crowdfunding. Then we also have a type of crowdfunding called SAFE where people can be investors and yet not be shareholders. So that's brand new. That just kind of came out. What is it called, Dr. Wright? It's called SAFE, S-A-S-E. And I'm just going to go over it briefly here. So please, no one on this you know, show think that I gave you the in-depth anything. Yeah. I gave, I'm giving you the, the top crust because, you know, we have limited time. I can't right. take up all of your time. So, uh, safe, you can be an investor and yet not a shareholder. You would have a convertible note that would convert, you know, at some time later with some terms and all this. Then there is also what we call rent, crowd granting where... Um, the city of Detroit has partnered with the local people that they could crowdfund to fix the street or school or something. And they would partner it with a grant that's already been written for. And if the people raise half the money, they'll go ahead and fund the rest. Oh, that's, is that new as well? That is brand new. Wow. Brand spanking new. And the state of Massachusetts, just in the last few months, has the entire state has that program going. So... Um, you you know, you can do that there. And those are the only two places that I know of at this time that have that set in place. There are other cities and, you know, people talking about it, but it's not quite happening yet. Now, so, doc, Dr. Wright, are these uh, different methods of crowdfunding on your website also? They're, n- they're not different. Cra- no, I don't offer crowdfunding a, a, a website. I don't have a private website where people can crowdfund. Uh, my, my job when I work with people is consulting and setting up their programs. They can use any website they want, but I don't personally run a crowdfunding website. Okay. So there are special crowdfunding websites for each of these types. So if you wanted to do subscription, TubeStarter is a great site to use. If you want to use the equity sites, you must do it on the equity sites. You can't get, sell shares of your company on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or GoFundMe. They're not set up for that. Okay. So each of these different types of crowdfunding must use different types of sites. So now you can see why people are so confused. I'm never surprised that people are confused. There's, there's so much out there that's hard to take all that in when all the experts ever say is crowdfunding. We never distinguish what we're talking about. Oh, okay. What, what was the seventh one? The seventh? Um, let's see. We did crowd granting, uh, charity crowdfunding, reward-based crowdfunding. We did crowd equity. We did uh, subscription-based and safe. Okay. There's and one there's, there's one that I'm missing. I've got reward-based, charity, equity, subscription, and uh, safe crowd crowdfunding. Mm-hmm. Which one did I miss? Safe, equity, let me see. Maybe I misspoke. 
Faith <laughs> Equity, I'm writing them down too. <laughs> Faith Equity uh, subscription or royalty reward based. Uh, charity is in a separate category because you need to do it differently than you've done the others. Uh-huh. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh, I guess that's it. Then I guess that's it. Okay. So okay. early, I know I my I have another business that I my I have a business partner that uh, we were launching a crowd fund for uh, for this entity to launch a, a a business that we're that we're going to, um, that's going to launch shortly, but uh, so we did it with Rocket I think it Rocket Fund or somebody of that nature Rocket Hub Robert probably Hub. Rocket Hub yeah it was Robert, Rocket Robert Hub and one of the things I recognized was that it it it, it it requires a lot of marketing or at least very strategic marketing and social media, your traditional and your, 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 your more social, uh, your online marketing, um, just getting that word out. Um, I've even heard of uh, crowd funds that use uh, public relation. Hey, Don, how are you? That use public relation um, specialists to help them really drive it f- so that they could get the pu- publicity they need, especially nonprofits that use it in that manner. You hit it on the head. That's exactly it. A lot of people don't realize that. You have to market it. You have to have a budget for that. And uh, people come to me and say, hey, I'm trying to raise a half a million dollars. I say, great. What is your budget for us to get the word out there using all of the techniques that you just talked about? And sometimes they'll say, I don't have a budget at all. And I'm saying, wow, you know, you've got it. You know, PR costs money. The advertising costs money. It costs money to get you in front of the people who will give you money, and that is part of crowdfunding. It's the crowd. You've got to get in front of the crowd. Mm -hmm. So when you say you need all of that, that is exactly right. Right. That is exactly right. Right. Okay. You, guys, you guys have a clear understanding of what crowdfunding. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, because I, I thought, um, you know, when I first read about it, and and I think I read about it in Forbes, and and I'm a follower of, of Fast Company, and um, Fast Company, and also Inc. Magazine, and they were really pushing it. And this was even before the equity fund. I was waiting for that to come up. Uh, waiting for that to be approved, which I think was earlier this year, right? That mm-hmm. Obama passed that. Yeah. Um, so that was, um, I thought, a great way because startups have a hard time finding monies for their businesses. Not, you know, your your SBAs and, and other entities and banks, they really, truly want you to have some traction before they invest in you. They want to make sure that they're going to get their money um, their money back. Uh, how are they going to get their money back? So I just I thought that crowdfunding was a great way for that to happen, and um, so that so I did a lot of research on it, and and I know it has evolved over the last three or four years. But I we just I, I think you do workshops, don't you? I do. I do workshops online and offline. Um, I uh, teach for the Los Angeles Small Business Administration about once a quarter. I teach for the Los Vegas Small Business Administration office once a quarter. Uh, I'm teaching for free on Periscope every single day. Oh, okay. And um, I do, uh, you know, I do a lot of online teaching so that people can understand it. Because that's the other thing. Um, People have to be ready for the opportunity. A lot of people are going up and they'll say, yeah, I need a half a million dollars. I need this investor. I say, great. Uh, Where's your business plan? Oh, well, I I don't have my business. You know, the things are not in place for you to receive that money. And so that's a big challenge, too. Even with crowdfunding, to a certain extent, certain things have to be in place. And when you're talking to an investor and you're getting to know an investor, number one, uh, the first, the first conversation cannot be "Hi, I need money." Uh, <laughs> investors, <laughs> investors want to get to know who they're talking to and yeah. what you're talking about and what's going on. And people don't know how to succinctly explain what their business is, and they need to go from an idea to a real opportunity. Right. And so, from an idea, everybody has ideas, but until it's an opportunity where money can be made excellent. or there's something to make some money, right. there's nothing for the investor to invest in. So we, we want to talk about this a little bit more, Dr. Wright, because you got some great information. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break right now. 
So once we take this break for about two minutes, we'll come back to you and uh, we'll, we'll talk some more because I'm really curious to know how this uh, crowdfunding works in terms of small business after they get the funds, then what happens next? So let's take a break. Okay. Pro is a cloud-based, all-in-one business management procedure and market research system that is uniquely designed to help minority business owners become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. This powerful tool makes running your business a very simple and easy process. Small Biz Pro provides immediate access to key documents in 10 seconds or less, so no more searching for those important documents when you need them. It gives business owners a sense of order and confidence. Are you ready to become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready? Then log into smallbizpro.net and get your limited free trial of Small Biz Pro today. So we're back on the Business Zone. This is Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic, along with... Crystal Mitchell. And we've got Dr. Wright on the line. Uh, she's talking to us a little bit about crowdfunding, which is pretty interesting. And uh, we're learning a lot about crowdfunding ourselves here from the, from the good doctor. So one of the questions that was uh, put out there just before we go into the break uh, for Dr. Wright is... After a small business obtain um, the crowdfunding they need, what happens next? Next, Are they obligated to pay it back? What do they need to do, Dr. Wright? Well, it depends on what kind of crowdfunding they're doing. There are such things as crowdfunded loans. And so uh, many times it, it depends on which type of crowdfunding they've picked out. But usually they have to deliver. If it's a reward-based crowdfunding, they have to deliver on whatever it is. So if it's a book, they have about 60 days to deliver that book to each person that paid for it. If it is um, if it is raising money for shares of the company, then they just will show that these people have invested in the company and give them the proper paperwork, and then they can go ahead and use the money for uh, whatever it was designated for inside the business. Now, do they have to register anywhere when they're involved in crowdfunding? If you are crowdfunding and you're selling shares of your company, yes, you have to use special crowdfunding websites. They uh, help you file the paperwork. The paperwork is not free. This is not something you can do if you don't have forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars sitting around. There's a lot of things that have to be filed. Wow, if that's using, amazing. Yeah, if you're just using reward-based crowdfunding, then no, you don't have to register. You can use any site you want to use. You can also even do it on your own site if you wish. Okay, excellent. Well, Crystal is going to go ahead and introduce our next guest, which is on the line. So we can have an interactive conversation here, Dr. Wright. So stay on the line, please, while Crystal uh, uh, introduce our next guest. Dwayne, you there? Hello? 
Hello, Dwayne. Are you on the line? Oh, wait. She's trying to... I think Dwayne is experiencing a little technical difficulties on the line there, Dr. Wright. So we'll continue. Crystal, do you have a question for Dr. Wright? Uh, yeah. My question, Dr. Wright, is what are, um, so we kind of talked about, uh, you know, the different types of, um, of crowdfunding. What are some of the pros and cons, say, for a small business? Are you there, Dwayne? I'm here. Can you hear me? Hi, Dwayne. How are you? We are a little challenged there with our technology, but we working it out, huh? Am well, I coming in loud and clear now? You are coming in loud and clear, and you are because on. Because I need a 19-year-old here to teach me about this Skype. Good <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Dwayne. This is Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic. Pleasure. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Thank and you. Thank you. also on the other line, we have a call in, and it's Dr. Letitia Wright. She is our, there we go. We can see Dwayne now. Um, we also have Dr. T Letitia Wright. She does crowdfunding. Uh, I've been listening intently, actually. Okay. I, I was talking, but I've been listening. I've been enjoying myself. <laughs> Excellent. Go Excellent. ahead, Ms. Felicia. All right, cool. So, so Dr. Wright, uh, you're about to uh, respond to a question that uh, Crystal had. You want to continue, yeah. please? Sure. The pros and cons are uh, crowdfunding can uh, give you an infusion of cash. Crowdfunding can bring in investors who not only have money but advice and connections. Uh, crowdfunding can be great because it creates a hungry tribe for your products and services, people who are very, very excited about it. Uh -huh. Crowdfunding uh, can be great. Anybody can do it. Uh, the cons are crowdfunding is not something that you can look at the outside and just say, oh, I'm going to do that and throw up and do it. It's not something that you throw up over the weekend. Um, the, the con is that you need a plan. The con is many times if you're raising lots and lots of money, you need a budget. Mm -hmm. And so we have this little chicken and egg thing. You know, I don't have any money. How can we have to raise money if you don't have any money? You know, right. we have that <laughs> going on. So that's the big, you know, that's the big challenge um, in working with clients. Uh, I don't work on commission. I don't raise money and then take mine out of your raise. I don't do any of that. All of my work is done up front, so I get paid up front. So a lot of people are saying, oh, I got a crowdfund just to afford you to crowdfund. Right. So there's a little bit of a chicken and egg going on yeah. with mm -hmm. that. But, again, when it comes to your business, um, there has to be an investment. A business is not a job. A business is not I work and then I get paid. A business is you must invest in this business and then it will bring you clients and dividends out of that investment. Okay. And so once people understand that um, if you're expecting your business to give you money when you haven't put anything in, you haven't paid for any marketing, you haven't paid for any advertising, you haven't gotten the word out there, nobody even knows you're in business except you and your family, right. you have a hard time making money. Right, exactly. So actually that first raise then, is, if that's going to be your friends and family, then you could raise the monies that you needed in order to have a successful crowdfund, which is going to raise you a much larger uh, amount of money than you would uh, when you, if you were just going to try to scrape it together from friends and family and your credit cards and all that lovely stuff, right? Exactly. And the thing is, is that you can... Uh, go and create real lending documents. You don't have to just say, hey, uncle, so-and-so, give me some money. You can create a lending document which shows how and when you're going to pay it back, and, and that gives them more security. And everything is understood when it's in writing, and nobody has, you know, bad feelings. Okay, sounds great. Uh, we pretty much... We pretty much encourage that type of uh, activity and behavior among our small business too. So that's great to know. Uh, this is we're speaking with Dr. Letitia Wright, and uh, she's a crowdfunding expert, and she's telling us a little bit about how small businesses can tap into that resource as an alternative resource in order to generate money and funds for their small business. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Dwayne Ellis on the other line, a very good friend of Crystal's. And um, Crystal is going to go ahead and ask him a few questions that he might want to 
uh, tie into crowdfunding and wealth and see how that might work for small businesses. Okay. Uh, Dwayne, so Dwayne and I met out, we were at the Power Networking Conference, so everyone that knows me know that when I came back, I was just so jazzed about that event. It was uh, with uh, Dr. George Frazier. It's an annual event that takes place in, for 16 years, actually. They're, this year, they will be, in 2017, they will be celebrating their 16th year, and the Power Network is celebrating Celebrating its 30th year in business, and uh, Doctor, if you've had an opportunity to meet Dr. F George Frazier, you, I know you are probably would be as enthusiastic as I have was when I returned from that uh, uh, conference. And in fact, I'm already signed up for next year. For 2017, it's going to be in July, and he, George, uh, Dr. Frazier was here a couple of days ago, last week actually, and so I gave my deposit, so I'm ready for next year, and we got some exciting things. So I met Dwayne in one of the workshops, and we got to talking about wealth and creation and creating economic empowerment, but uh across the country, not just in Los Angeles. We we wanted to be able to talk about it in a bigger scope, on a national scope and a global scope. So he and I saw that there was some synergy for what we were doing. So we're trying to, uh, for the business zone, we want it to be a show that is not just here in the West Coast. We want the show to be um, popular across the country. And so Dwayne and I are going to work together and, and with uh, with uh, Business Zone, uh, myself and Gilbert, and see how we can make that happen. Excellent. So, uh, Dwayne, tell us a little bit about your history. I, I read your bio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think you did an excellent job of setting up how we met and, and the synergy. And I bring you greetings from the East Coast. Oh, thank here you. Here in Washington, D.C. and Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, and, and I think wealth is a East Coast and West Coast uh, situation. So I'm glad to be a part of your platform. Excellent. Uh, my, my background, I've been in business and financial services for 15 years, 10 years as a financial planner. And um, am I coming through clearly? I'm a little. Yes, yeah, you're very fine. Clear, very you're, clear. you're doing technology good. really well, sir. <laughs> okay, good. Finally. So uh, I, I've been in the business for 15 years. Uh, I've seen wealth. I've seen how it works. And um, it, there's a lot of misnomers about it and how it works and what it actually is. And, and I'm looking forward to getting deeper into that. But again, 15 years as a financial, uh, in the financial services realm and 10 years as a financial planner. Uh, I work for a lot of corporations. I actually started the Wealth Syndicate in November of last year. And uh, it's been a great experience. So I was enjoying the talk about crowdfunding and, and the talk about businesses needing funds. Uh, I think they said at the George Frazier event, um, you always need money as a small business. There's never a time when you don't need money uh, because you just don't know what's going to come up. So that's a very important talk as Dwayne, well. Dwayne, do you currently work with small businesses? And if so, what size? Absolutely. Uh, small businesses of all sizes. Uh, I would say uh, small businesses with revenues of about 500000 and up are what I primarily work with. And um, their, their needs are much different because they don't have the 401k plans and the IRAs to fall back on. Mm -hmm. uh, so their planning is a little different than the average individual. Right, right, right. Now, Dr. Wright, are you going to be at uh, the Power Network next year? Yes, I am. Are you going to be one be of the speakers? I haven't been asked to speak yet, but uh, here's hoping. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's one of my aspirations as well. <laughs> is waiting for George to give the old K so I can be a speaker. So I'm working on my way. I'm working. I'm working on it. <laughs> yes, yes. So, Mr. Ellis, tell us uh, on the air here for our small business uh, population, yes. how does your financial uh, services background help small businesses that you're working with uh, gaining access to capital? Good question. Um, with the small businesses that I'm working with now, uh, it's a very interesting um, uh, situation or relationship when I work with small businesses because I'm a small business owner and I know my passion is the wealth syndicate. And every small business owner I work with, 
their passion is their business. So sometimes they forget about the personal side. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be two sides to their planning. There'll be the business side where we'll talk about um, key man insurance and business insurance and mm-hmm. setting up 401k plans for their employees. And then there's also a personal side where they're setting up things for their family as well, personal insurance, disability insurance, and the like. So it's almost like working with two people when I work with small businesses. I work with them as a business owner, and then I work with them as an individual as well. So do you also work with buy-sell agreements? And if so, can you tell the audience a little bit about buy-sell agreement, what they are, and how they they work for small business? Absolutely. Very, very important. Uh, A buy-sell agreement is an agreement with partners in a business where if something happens to one of the partners, there's insurance taken out on each partner so that that insurance would go to the business to either purchase the shares of the partner who's passed or in some cases to fund uh, the family of that particular insu- of, of that particular owner has passed as well. So, right. for example, if you have two owners, they'll have policies on each other. If one of them passes, then that insurance benefit would go to the business and the business will have an opportunity to either... Uh, in most cases, by the ownership rights yeah. of the past individual. So that's very important when you're trying to keep a business going and creating a legacy. Right, right. That's very good to know. Crystal, do you have any questions? Um, so wealth, we, you know, that's kind of your area of expertise. Is expertise. Mm-hmm. So when we're talking, when you're, when you're coaching or talking with a, or advising a small business on creating wealth, what are some of your, what is your advice to, to them, especially when they're right in that permit, uh, that infancy stage of, of sure. seeking money first? Sure. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, when you're at the startup age, there's naturally going to be a lot of money put in in those first one to three years. So you just have to anticipate that. Sometimes I meet small business owners before they start the business. So that's one of the first questions I have. Are you well capitalized? Uh, Because you're going to need capital in those first um, couple of years as you're starting up the business, normally one to three years. Uh, you, you're really putting a lot of cash into the business. So it's just important, you know, mm-hmm. from a financial planning standpoint, that you actually right. have a plan before you start your business, yeah. uh, a business plan. Right. Um, you want to have that uh, to help you uh, have a direction as you're going through those first three years of business. You don't want to forget as a business owner to still invest in your IRAs, to still put some of your, your business revenue away. Uh, for your eventual retirement. Most of my business owners, they always think I'm going to sell my business for $3 billion and um, and ride off into the sunset. And I rarely see that happen. So you still want to be disciplined and put away uh, along with that capitalization of your business. You still want to put away for your own personal retirement. Let me ask this question. Um, let's say that you have someone that we have someone that's thinking about going into business and they've been, they've had a corporate career. And so Mm -hmm. they have those 401ks and, and all those vehicles in place. So what would be your advice for them utilizing some of those resources that they have, or maybe they're, they're coming to you five years or three years before they're about to retire. And now, Mm -hmm. okay, now let's, let's project out what your second act is going to be and right. how can we position you utilizing those tools you're speaking of in order to prepare them? Because, Dr. Wright, that could help with laying out that foundation for crowdfunding, right? Absolutely, because they have, to, if they have an existing business. They have to know, are you inviting people in to become shareholders? You know, what are you offering? And, you know, I talk to many people, and they're like, well, we're going we're gonna to sell, you know, we, we just thought they would just give us money. And it's like, you know, investors make their money work. And people even yes. have to understand the difference between what an angel investor is looking for, what your average investor is looking for. And uh, many times the deals are too small for an angel investor. They're looking for $10 million investments and up. And while everybody would be glad to have $10 million, not many people have a plan of what to do with $10 million to make it make money. 
So then Dwayne, on, on the other side of that, on that re- wealth creation, if you've set up that platform, then at least you have some assets, right? So how could they utilize to be able to pair both of those together? Well, you know what? As a financial advisor, in that specific situation that you spoke of, you really have to have a, 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 a candid conversation uh, mm-hmm. with the client. If they're going from a 20 years in corporate America, about to do that second act as you stay, mm-hmm. you know, you really have to, I, I really impress on them the fact that it will take some capital unless you're crowdfunding, unless you have angel investors. It's going to take some capital to get your business started. So, you know, you, you, you have to have candid conversations up front. Uh, if you use funds that are qualified or an IRAs as a tax um, uh, deduction, not a deduction necessarily, but there's a tax hit for that as right. such. So you've, you've got to have those conversations up front. Is this the right thing to do? If it is the right thing you do and you believe in your business, then you put all you can into, you, into your business. But so, you have that conversation up front. Up front. So what would be your advice? Because I have a couple of clients, and actually I think I ran across somebody re- recently that had said that they were going to sell their home um, and they were going to um, uh, uh, use all the money in their 401K uh, so that they could start their business, so that they would have whatever they their investment to get moving with their business. What would be your advice from a, as a financial planner uh, on someone that said that they were just about to wipe themselves out? That would be my advice. You're about to wipe yourself out. <laughs> so can you tell them from your standpoint? <laughs> you know, over the years, I've, I've had to have some, like I said, candid talks and some tough conversations. Uh, with with people uh, because I really value people's financial future and their freedom and what they're going to do for the next few years. Uh, it's really going to depend on a lot of factors, uh, their age, what business they're doing, what kind of board of directors or advisors do they have, does their business make sense. And one of the great things about working with me is I have a sense for business. I'm not only a financial advisor that deals with stocks and bonds and retirement. I have a sense for business as well. So That's good. Uh, yeah, you in that particular scenario, if you're selling houses, if you're you're wiping out 401k's, <laughs> you may need to look into some crowdfunding. You may need to talk to Ms. Wright <laughs> about that and, and, and get some other people's money involved. Uh, I don't know in that scenario that I would advise them to do those two things, you know. Okay, okay yeah, because that, that's, a, that's a common thing, because I think when people hear, you know, when they're going to a bank, a bank says, which was traditional funding, you know, what are you, what is, what skin do you have in the game? Where are you going to put some money up? So, you know, mm-hmm. where are they going to think about it? Okay, I got my 401k, I got equity in my house, if I sell my home. So they're thinking that that's what that means when where's your your equity that you're putting up or, or the your your investment into your own business. And so they take that literally um, which, uh, you know, my thing is, you know, businesses in the first three to four years, it can, it can, it can fail. And at that point yes. you didn't, you didn't lost out on all of that you've invested into your business, um, over the, over a time frame working for someone else, uh, in order to create this passion business. And it, just, for whatever reason, I mean, I, I, for, uh, what, six years ago, or uh, what has it been almost nine years ago when the, ec- when the economy crashed, there was nothing anyone could do. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And you know what, Crystal, I mean, my job is really, you know, and it's really cliche to say it, but I'll say it. It's like a doctor. If you come into a doctor's office and you tell them you got a headache, they're checking your pulse, they're checking your blood. The last thing that they'll check actually is what you're actually coming in there for. And now I understand the reasoning behind that because the prescription that they're going to give you, they have to make sure that the other parts of your body are functioning correctly and it won't counteract in a negative way. Right. So really as a financial planner, you know, all of those factors that you said, I take them all into consideration. And, um, you know, if again, if it's a great plan and they've got passion for it and it makes sense, you know, then I'll say one thing. But if it doesn't, you know, I, I don't want to have that conversation three years later and that business fails. Right, exactly. And they're trying to scrape. I don't want to have that. 
scraped themselves back up together and now they've lost their business and on top of lost their uh, their their portfolio their asset portfolio at the same time and they're starting from scratch alicia hi alicia yes thank you alicia says it's a great show and wow so much knowledge is being shared um so uh, thank you guys for tuning in so dr wright in addition to so what do uh, Dwayne was saying, you know, businesses are like a holistic kind of project, right? So there's different components to it. So you not are, not only are just a crowdfunding specialist, you also do bra branding and marketing, and you have a television show. So does your television show also focus on small businesses or businesses in particular, any particular business? Yeah, Right Place TV has been on since 2000, and I've always focused on entrepreneurs. I love entrepreneurs. We love our corporate brothers and sisters because they give us sponsorship. But I really dig talking to entrepreneurs, finding out what makes them tick and what makes them want to do what they do at an excellent level. And so um, I enjoy that. Crowdfunding is sort of a newer specialty that I've picked up. And so um, just in this new 2016-2017 season, have I actually been uh, helping people promote their projects on the show and talk about it. Um, it is is very, very interesting how uh, the topics change, but I love talking to entrepreneurs about how to grow their business and bringing in some success strategies. And so that's, you know, what I look forward to. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, and it takes all of that. So your show, giving them an opportunity to brand themselves and actually get exposure, which if they were running a crowdfund would be excellent, <laughs> as well as the business zone, if you were, if you actually had a crowdfund, because it's about gathering that crowd out to get them excited and interested in what you're doing interested enough and connected enough where they're going to actually go into their pocket and release their funds from their pocket to put in your pocket. So it, that requires a, some courtship, man, right. you know, for you to be able to do, to do that. Uh, Dwayne, can you tell mm -hmm. us, cause you know, and, and Dr. Wright, you can interject in this as well. So we know our communities are, are in a situation where w because we are where we are without economic uh, empowerment or the, the economics are so low that we found ourselves in a position of no power, how can we, what does that mean when we talk about wealth and creating wealth in our community that can t change the current positions that we're in? All right, I'll, I'll take the first shot at that. Okay. And one thing that I did send in a, in a couple of notes earlier, a couple of hours ago, we got and it's something that I really want to stress to everyone that's listening. Wealth is not money. I know that's going to be a shock for a lot of people. <laughs> it might throw you off a little bit. But wealth is not money. Wealth is not cars. The key characteristics of wealth is that wealth produces after itself. So wealth is something that creates more wealth. Wealth is something that produces after itself. So you can use money and convert money into wealth. For example, and you said it, uh, Gilbert, a little earlier about the bond situation where if you have uh, $100,000, it's just going to be $100,000. Yes. You know, unless you do something with it. Yes. You take that same $100,000 and you put it in, let's say, a municipal bond, paying a 5% coupon, which is like 5% interest on that money. Every year, that particular $100,000 is going to produce an extra $5,000. So, you know, you've, we've got to kind of change the paradigm, change your mindset when you're thinking about wealth and what it is and what it isn't. Now, um... Dwayne, uh, how, yeah. do you, how do you see your organization working with someone like Dr. Wright on collaborating both of these topics we're talking about today, wealth and crowdfunding? How do you see that happening? Uh, I think it's a great synergy. Um, it's, it's almost like that doctor analogy that I mentioned earlier. Normally one doctor comes in the office and then the other doctor comes in the office. I, I actually had a chance to work with a couple of venture capitalists and angel investors uh, as well. So, 
Normally, I would be the first doctor to take the pulse yes. and take the blood pressure yes. and put that little stethoscope on their chest mm -hmm. and kind of check out their vitals first. Yeah. Because, again, if you're talking about investors and you're borrowing money from other people, they're going to want a return on their investment. Right. That's so true. if if your body or your business is not equipped, you know, to take the money and make a return out of it, you know, you're, you're not equipped for that new money. So probably the first visit will be to me to check out all the vitals of the person in the business. And then the second appointment would be with um, Ms. Wright. Now, what are three things that you would say destroy wealth based on your experience? Right. Yeah. The first thing is is ignorance, not really understanding in the, in the context that we're talking today, not understanding your business, not understanding your industry, mm -hmm. not understanding the market that you're in, yeah. not understanding. That ignorance of what you're doing is really the first thing that destroys wealth. So in the scenario that you talked about, Crystal, you know, if you sell your house, you're yeah. selling, you know, all your 401k, you're cashing that in and you don't understand the business you're going into, you've just destroyed some wealth. Wow. You know, and then in the second thing that comes to mind is just lack of collaboration. Mm -hmm. You know, wealth creation is not golf. Right. It's more like football. It's more <laughs> like basketball in terms of you have teammates. If you don't have a, a CPA, if you don't have a financial advisor like myself, if you don't have an insurance person, right. if you don't have crowdfunding yeah. or, cr or credit person, if you don't have them on your team, yeah. you're missing out on opportunities and likely you're going to get yourself in, in some kind of trouble down the road. So lack of collaboration definitely destroys wealth. You cannot do these things on your own. Um, Right. So those are the two things that come to mind right off in terms of what destroys wealth. Okay, sounds pretty good. I'm sure uh, the listeners love that response. That was pretty good. Crystal, you had a question? Uh, so, Dr. Wright, from, from your standpoint, what does, and as you've been speaking and talking and, and, and working with small businesses, uh, how do we create uh, that long um, affecting wealth that can change the, 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 the framework of our small businesses in, within our communities? Well, I, I totally agree that we should not be putting everything at risk, uh, real estate and all of our 401Ks. Everything doesn't have to go up at risk in right. order for you to move forward in your own business. Mm -hmm. In order for us to have wealth, um, we do have to have some things to pass on. Mm -hmm. So I saw a T-shirt once somebody wore, wore and he said, uh, no more crowdfunding, buy insurance. <laughs> and, I think I saw that too. <laughs> yeah. And I feel strongly exactly that way. Instead of just doing things willy nilly, yeah. you know, let's put some things in place. You yeah. know, do you have insurance? Are are your other things in place before you're going to go put things at risk? Do you have things ready to pass down? Are you creating investments? Mm -hmm. um, are you creating investments for your children? My niece and nephew, uh, my sister had her children kind of late they're only four three or four and so because through uh, the new methods of crowdfunding you can directly invest in u-haul without going to stocks and shares and everybody else mm -hmm. you can go directly to them and get like this quarterly you know income coming in yeah. i bought them into u-haul so every time we're driving around and a u-haul truck goes by i say look there's your truck there's yeah. your business oh okay excellent and so we have to start um, being very sober with what we have, mm -hmm. but we also have to start educating our children and getting them in there. My parents, unfortunately, have passed on. And so the conversations about investments and stocks and real estate, my dad is not here to have that conversation. My, my parents were together until they, you know, my father died. Mm -hmm. And so he's not around to have that conversation in front of these grandchildren right. and so i'm having the conversation in front of it yes it's over their head yes they don't get it mm -hmm. but i want them to be hearing these words so when it's time to really get into it they're not scared and intimidated it's something that they've been hearing all of their lives and so i think the biggest mistake that we make is number one we're not even planning on 
leaving anything. Mm -hmm. um, people don't know the, mo the difference between new money and old money. Mm -hmm. You know what the difference between old money and new money is? Yeah, I'm Chris, you've talked you talk about it before. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. Trust funds. <laughs> it's not just that. It's four generations of money. That okay. means old money. Mm -hmm. Right, old money. So if you could go four generations Deep. of your family having money, you are now old money. Mm -hmm. And what African Americans keep doing, because we don't listen, you know, to the advice from people like the wealth syndicate and we don't talk, you know, we don't sit down and talk to anybody like yeah. that can really break it down to us. Mm -hmm. We start new money over and over and over again. And what it has gotten us to is the first generation of African American children that are not doing better than parents. We're right. gonna we're gonna have to talk about getting you uh, uh, in one of our workshops, uh, Doctor Wright, so you can talk a little bit. Uh, you too, Dwayne. Uh, if, That'd be awesome. If, if you're in the area, it would be really <laughs> nice because you guys have some great uh, points and information and resources. And well, can I add one other thing there yes. to chime in on what uh, Ms. Wright said? And it's Dr. Wright. I'm sorry. I just Dr. Had Wright, to, I'm sorry, Dr. Wright. that in there. I'm sorry. I just had to, I worked hard for that. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Wright. I did. Yes, ma'am. I got a few Dr. Klein. <laughs> but you know what? When you're talking about wealth, you know, and, and I put this analogy in the notes, uh, is wealth the apple or is wealth the apple seed? Mm. And that's, a, that's again, a, a paradigm shift. That's, again, a thought pattern that African-Americans, you know, have to think about. Mm -hmm. The wealth is the seed. Right. The wealth is not the apple. Right. Because in the seed will give you a tree, and that tree will give you hundreds of apples. Right. Generations ahead. Yes. yes. You know, but what do you do with the seed? It yes. takes time. You have to till the soil. You have to water it. Yes. See, wealth yes. takes time. Yes. And Dr. Wright was, was, was exactly right. Old money takes time. Yes. It takes time to get old money and good decisions. And so, that, you know, it, if you're going to create wealth, you've really got to change the whole way that you think about money right. and think about wealth. That's the point I wanted to chime no, no. in. That's an excellent, excellent point for those that are on Facebook Live. So we're talking today about wealth creation and how is that? That's uh, the, uh, one of your statements was in pa uh, being impatient because it does take time. Yes. I mean, to plant a ch for apple tree is going to take you know generate you know uh, several years to make it so it can populate and then continue to do that year after year after year. So really, then with that with those with that in mind then we're talking about we need to be having these conversations with our young people today so that uh and we're talking young as as young as your niece your nephews uh dr wright you're absolutely right that um if they understand about the stock market they understand about uh, uh creating passive income when they have their children after they grow up, they have their children and then they can start passing that down. Because at this point, we, those of us that are 45 and over, you know, if our children are still young, we can still have that conversation. But definitely 50 and 60 plus, you know, if you didn't pass that over or, or have those discussions with your children 20, 30 years ago, then that's not going to happen. But we can now look at our younger generation, which is what Dr. Frazier has been talking about, you know, creating the $1 million for 1 million children. Uh, we can work on that so that this world can be a better place for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's, there's still things that we can do. Maybe you can't leave as much as you could if you had started planning at 20, but there are something that you can do just putting aside uh, a policy for your burial and some extra cash for your burial would do a lot in halting the next generation from being all messed up for two years because they're trying to figure out how to bury you. So there's, there's some great things we can do. And I just wanted to give away, I have a, a free guide uh, called Crowdfunding Made Simple. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to give out a text number where people could download it for free. It'll help them understand more about crowdfunding. Oh, yes. And then when they get to the point of asking questions, they'll be uh, well informed, whether they're talking to me or whoever they're talking to. Okay. So, well, what is that text, Dr. Wright? Sure. You can text book. B O O K to nine oh nine nine zero six nine seven nine seven. So that's, that's book. Mm -hmm. 
909-906-9797. Beautiful. And what they can do is they can use the text on their phone. It'll bring them to a link. They can put it in their email, and it'll send them the book. It's a quick read. It's a great read. Mm-hmm. And it's got 25 great crowdfunding sites that you can start looking at. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're going to do that as well. You know, uh, um, Gilbert just said something that, you know, how we could all work together. So, you know, Gilbert, we're we're right now. He's in, he's in Maryland. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Wright is down in the Riverside area, and we're here up in Los Angeles. That's how we can have that happen, right? Yeah. Because I think Absolutely. for our community, we have workshops on business plan writing. We have, uh, we don't have a lot on marketing, but the areas and booking, we, we focus on the same areas. I think we need to start having uh, uh, collaborative workshops on or webinars on these subjects. Because I think in other communities and other ethnicities, this is something that is ingrained in their souls. We need to ingrain this in, and, and a lot of times, what and that's the really reason why the Business Zone was created, was because we don't operate with knowledge. That's true. Absolutely. You can Absolutely. do better if you know better, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No question. You can't do better without knowing better, <laughs> that's right. from, my, from my standpoint. Yeah. And I really salute, you know, Crystal and Gilbert and your platform and getting this conversation started. And um, we absolutely can collaborate on the East Coast yes. or the West Coast yes. or the Midwest if we have to meet in the middle. Yes. But that, we, can cer- we can certainly start this, this ball rolling because it's, it's a conversation that needs to be had. That sounds very good. And since we have 14,000 strong out there uh, entrepreneurs that uh, tap into our program on a regular basis, this would be fertile, fertile soil for that. So we really appreciate this. This is great. We've got about four minutes left. So um, did you, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, the, uh, Dr. Wright. So when you have your workshops, where do, how can they, um, our audience, our listening audience, uh, um, tap into your workshops, uh, sign up for your, register for your workshops, and is there a cost involved? Um yeah, it just it just depends on where the workshops get are. Mm-hmm. Um, when they sign up and get the download, they'll be on the list and they'll be alerted as to all of the new workshops. Um, many times, the small business administration workshops are free, which is really sad because they have great workshops. And so, I love being part of that team. We pay taxes for that, so get in there and I take a small business uh, administration <laughs> class. Just because I know I pay taxes. <laughs> now that's important. a good concept. I, I love <laughs> I I love the tax piece right there because uh, a lot of people don't realize uh, that uh, by paying our taxes, you know, we're helping others. Some people think we can we can just skate and not pay taxes. So that's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I pay taxes. That's how I feel like I get my money's worth. It's going to. Under a class, an expert class, I'm feeling good about that. That's good. So, Mr. Ellis, what type of workshops you've got going on and where and when? Good question. Uh, I'll put the website up first, uh, www.thewealthsyndicate.com, www.thewealthsyndicate.com. Actually, Crystal caught me at a great time. I'm actually in the process of writing an ebook now, so... Once that's out, I'll hopefully I'll come back on your program and talk more about it. But it's going to really be talking about the psychology and the paradigm of wealth. And it will get into some of those other aspects of state planning, insurance, and the like. So, Oh, I uh, love that. I love that. That's great. So everybody just keep posted to the website. And as things come about, we shall promote it. And if you could put a little chapter in there on how this impacts entrepreneur. That would be great because entrepreneurs need, uh, I think one of the points that you raise about uh, wealth is that uh, what really destroys wealth for for entrepreneurs, small and minority owned businesses, is that they're impatient. So, you know, if if, if you can um, uh, emphasize the significance of that with entrepreneurs, that would be really great, step by step. Will do. That sounds great. All right. That sounds and Dr. Wright, how do they reach you? They can reach me at uh, get crowdfunded 
www.ebnow.com. They can call the office, 909-235-9744. And I am on social media as Dr. Wright One, so you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Periscope. You know, I'm... I, you can actually Google Dr. Wright, and I will come up. So well, we're, we're definitely <laughs> we're definitely going to connect with you on social media because uh, we've got some great things going on on Facebook as well. So both of you will now become our new best friends. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and I'm on Facebook and Twitter as well. Yes. Yeah, we great love connecting new friends. <laughs> so, Dr. Wright, how do we? Uh, where is? Where do you? How do you actually access the right place? The TV show. Is that on um, that Right Place TV show, you'd have to go on Dish On Demand, but you can go to rightplacetv.com, W-R-I-G-H-T, place, TV as in television, dot com, and you can watch a few of the episodes there. Okay. And, um, and then what I uh, will be doing in this new season is making sure all of the episodes get to YouTube, which I have not been doing in the past. Okay. And, um, and so people who are not in the area will get to watch it, so. Now, I'm really excited about it. Now, I got a quick question uh, for Dr. Wright and Mr. Ellis. Um, before, prior to today, did, did, did any of you uh, ever go to uh, YouTube and look at our videos of the show to see what we provide on this show and the audience that we target and what our mission is? Um, I went to your website. I, did, I didn't have time to watch videos. Uh, and but I did go to the website, and for me, I always try to research um, whoever show I'm on, so that I'm tailoring what I'm saying yes. to you. That's just a thing that I do. Yes. But um, uh, I didn't have time to actually watch the show. My preference is to watch three shows yes. before I go on, right. so that I'm really down with what you need to do. So I hope, uh, with all my heart, that I really uh, educated people and gave them what they needed. And so, if you don't bust me on that, no, I, I did not. Do oh, no, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! You did. That, that, that's 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 not what this is about. We're, 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 we're a resource for entrepreneurs and small business. So the reason I asked you that is if you looked at previous shows, you would see some of the things that we speak about for small business. And we've been getting a lot of great feedback on it, saying that our platform is it, it, it really unique and it provides a service that no one else out there is providing. So, you know, I, I just mentioned that to show that, you know, what you're doing today and what Mr. Ellis is doing today is a part of that archive, and it's it's phenomenal. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Thank you so much, life, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both for contributing. Um, and so we'll have um, have to have you both back on at, at, at some given point in time and uh, continue this conversation. But I think the more we talk about wealth and, and the creation of that and resources and tools to make that happen. And um, actually, so I just got a little idea for, you know, I'm, I, I do QuickBooks, and I've actually been doing working with QuickBooks for last a oh, while, wow, since 1989 or so, 83. I think they started in 83, 88. Since she was three. Yeah, since I was three. <laughs> <laughs> I was a prodigy. <laughs> So, um, but one of the things they've recently done uh, for our conferences, we now do all our conferences virtual. Mm. And they do a three-day virtual conference. And you have speakers pop in, and then it's a mall, like a, like a, uh, um, a, a virtual um, a shopping mall, so you can go and look at the different booths and vendors, and, and then... You know, the topics are all geared around whatever subject is, and in that case, it's all about financial. It's all about QuickBooks, and it's about the affiliated marketers that they work with. So we ought to think about that, maybe, and and do something like that. That could be pretty pretty revolutionary for for our industry. Yeah, any we can work together. That that sounds great to me. And we have a parting gift, a parting gift for both of you uh, on this show. There's a program, there's a patent pending program that we develop here on, on uh, the Business Zone. It's called Small Biz Pro. And Small Biz Pro is a cloud-based, three-in-one business management, procurement, and market research assistant uh, system that helps small businesses to locate, manage, and uh, organize their paperwork and also yeah. to, to keep them in compliance with government rules, regulations, and all of that. It also helps them to become business-ready, contract-ready, and bank loan-ready. So we're going to provide you guys 
access. We're going to give you a lifetime membership, subscription membership to that. Awesome. For free. Because what we want you to do is to use this tool and see the significance of it, how it will help you to better to be a better business owner, and also you can spread the word and share it with other entrepreneurs. That is wow, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That is That's awesome. Nice. Thank you very so, much. So the, 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 the address, the website address is www.smallbizpro.net. That's small, S-M-A-L-L, biz, B-I-Z, Pro, P R O dot net. So just go there, follow the instructions and register. Click on uh, registrate or logging or, or register, and it will take you through the steps. Okay? Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Compliance is always big with me. The SEC and friend are always listening. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and also, it's a great tool, um, one, for maintaining, uh, for your clients to maintain their, their re records and reports and things that you need in order to do a better job. And the same thing for you, Dr. Wright, um, when they're building a, a campaign, a crowdfunding campaign, to be able to have all their source documents in one location. And it also gives you an opportunity to do a lot of research. It has... Uh, the industry codes uh, for um, and whatever you need to research and uh, out there, it has it, it's really a very powerful tool. So you guys will check. The, you'll see that when you when you uh, sign on for it to it. Oh. But it'd be Thank great to so as a as a referral for your for your clients as well. Awesome, excellent. Well, thank you all for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you, you Doctor Wright. Right. Appreciate you, buddy. Gilbert. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. So we just had a wonderful uh, interview there with uh, our guests. This is great. Yeah, they didn't. They weren't even in the. They weren't even here. So those on Facebook Live, you'll have to uh, check out the show on um, when we put it up on YouTube in in an hour or so, so that you can see all and hear all the great information that was going on. Um, uh, you probably have all checked out because you didn't hear us talking. Um, but that's the idea. Go to MorrisMediaLive.com and you can watch the show uh, streaming live. Uh, thank you. Uh, she just uh, came back and said thank you. Uh, you can see us alive. You can see the show and the guests that are on the show. And so today we did something special. That was kind of oh, cool. Yeah, we had that's Skyping great. on one line and call Ground in on the other. Groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Mars Media Live will do for you. Yeah, so. Miss Felicia is just awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Felicia. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and take, take a, a quick break, break and then right we're now. Come back and talk about some things. Exactly. So okay. let's take a break. management procedure and market research system that is uniquely designed to help minority business owners become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. This powerful tool makes running your business a very simple and easy process. 